Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Envision 2014, Preserving Biodiversity Amidst the Fight for Power and Profit. I'm Joanna Vicente, Executive Director of IFP and the Made in New York Media Center. Thank you all for coming. And this is Maher Nasser from the United Nations. So I'm going to start and then I'll take this. So now in the sixth year, Envision is IFP's partnership with the United Nations Creative Community Outreach Commun Initiative. As many of you know, the purpose of Envision is to bring together UN leaders, NGO advocates, civil society organizations, educators, and policymakers with some of the most creative minds in film and new media to explore innovative ways to bring about social change. I'm quite proud of our program tonight. We're very pleased to be presenting Virunga, fresh off of its award-winning festival run. Virunga is a vital and challenging achievement in storytelling. In Virunga, we are confronted by not only the beauty and fragility of wildlife and natural resources, but the geopolitical forces that threaten their existence. We hope that with Virunga, the powerful storytelling of documentary film will raise awareness, inspire action, and build coalitions strong enough to protect the endangered gorillas and the irreplaceable natural refuge that is Virunga. I'd like to thank Director Orlando von Einziedel for being here tonight and coming all the way from London to join us. I'd also like to thank RBC, the Heinemann Foundation, and especially the DGA for hosting us tonight. Without them, tonight would not be possible. I would like to thank Edward Norton for doing the keynote uh, speech tonight. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank Envision producer, Alyssa Burke, and uh, IFP Senior Director of Programming, Milton Cabot, and our partners at the UN. So now I'd like to introduce you formally to Maher Nasser, Acting Head of the United Nations Department of Public Information. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Joanna. I would like to start by thanking Envision for this partnership and this opportunity. Uh, we had hoped that Secretary General Ban Ki-moon would be with us today because this issue, the issue that the film talks about and, and his dedication to the issues of environmental sustainability is very close to his heart. However, the week that we're having this screening and discussion is just before what we call the UN General Assembly Week, a week that is not very popular in New York City, we know, <laughs> we apologize. But in addition to the UN General Assembly that's taking place next week, the Secretary General is calling or holding a climate summit. We expect so far more than 120 heads of government and state to attend next week. In total, there are four high level summits taking place. One is on population and development. One is the World Conference on Indig Indigenous People. And of course, the Climate Summit and the General Assembly uh, General Debate. In total, 144 heads of government and state will be in town next week. Don't go to the east side <laughs> or use the subway. Uh, and looking, I haven't seen the film, so I'm looking forward to see it. But knowing what it's about and what it talks and the, the issue that it presents, it's very much more or less a little bit about what we're trying to do at the UN. The wardens are trying to protect the natural, the, lo the oldest national park in the DRC. And if you look at it today, the climate summit is about protecting the climate and the environment and the biodiversity of this planet. It's according to the Secretary General, basically this might be the last opportunity for this generation to make a difference. Science, I think, has beyond doubt proven that we are on a very hazardous path if, unless we limit carbon emissions to two, to increase to about two degrees between now and the middle of this century. The climate summit is a call to action. We expect the 120 heads of government and state and other leaders from the private sector and civil society uh, to come and actually announce actions what are they going to do to make a difference? At the same time, the General Assembly will also be looking at conflicts, and there are many of those, whether they are civil conflicts like we're seeing in Syria uh, or Iraq, the rise of new terrorist organizations, 
ISIS, uh, some people know it as ISIL, or the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, or Sham, uh, what's happening in the Central African Republic, and most recently an issue that wasn't even on the agenda six months ago, Ebola. The, the Ebola virus disease that so far is wreaking havoc and creating a condition uh, beyond a public health in three member states, in three countries, Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia. All of these issues, the world leaders will be coming and grappling with next week. The Secretary General today gave a press conference to basically outline what he hopes to be achieved next week and how are we going to address all of these issues. Of course, there are no quick solutions or easy solutions, but on climate change, he also announced the appointment of a new messenger of peace. Leonardo DiCaprio will be the new messenger of peace announced today by the Secretary General and focusing on climate change. The Secretary General also announced and he's probably the first Secretary General to be participating in a march. So he will, be, he will be participating in the climate march on Sunday, and he will be participating in the Global Citizen Festival in Central Park on Saturday the 27th, which is uh, aiming to reduce and fight poverty. Joanna spoke a bit about our partnership and what the UN does, uh, and this is the kind of thing that if people think of the UN, of diplomats, ambassadors, peoples in suits like me who are boring and making long statements, <laughs> but through this partnership, we want to create a link with many of you, filmmakers, who can make and tell stories in a much better way than we do, and also to reach audiences that don't necessarily follow the long speeches in the General Assembly or the discussions in the Security Council. So with this partnership, we hope that the issues that are on the UN's agenda, it's not about the UN as an organization, it's a very important organization and I think it, it, it has achieved a lot since it was created, it's not perfect, but it hopefully, imagine a world without the UN, but the issues on the agenda of the UN, whether shown by films like Virunga, uh, the fight of brave uh, wardens to protect the oldest natural park, national park in Africa, to preserve biodiversity, uh, to preserve the people's right in that region to live the way they have for generations against poachers, against the M23 uh, militias and others. So without a long, I mean, first we'd like to thank again, share you, Joanna with thanking the filmmaker Orlando von Eichen, Einsch, I'm sorry, Ein Siedel for being with us today and bringing his film and sharing it with us. Uh, our UNDP colleague, Nick Sekran, who will be uh, also participating as an expert on biodiversity. And again, I would like to welcome, uh, mm -hmm. along with Joanna, the UN Goodwill Ambassador for Biodiversity, Edward Norton, who was appointed by the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon in 2010, uh, twice award uh, nominee and also an activist and also the leader of Maasai Wilderness Conservation Trust, a pioneering partnership between professional conversationists and young Maasai leaders. That partnership helps bring local community in Kenya prosper by in intelligently managing their ecosystems. I think we couldn't ask for a better keynote speaker to accompany the film that we're about to see tonight. Thank you. Edward. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Um, the Set Your Mind at Ease keynote address sounds very formal and long. I'm not going to uh, uh, make a long uh, talk. I, um, I'm really happy to introduce this film uh, for a number of reasons. One, it's a terrific film. Two, it's a terrific example of um, people in the medium of film, in the medium of the arts, uh, using their talents to dig into and exfoliate and um, dissect and expose uh, the kinds of stories that, that, um, that are emblematic of a very, very important uh, debate, fight, uh, challenge that the, the world is facing collectively. Um, it's, it's a film that's dramatic and human and uh, but at the same time, it really illuminates questions that we've all got to uh, grapple with. 
and it doesn't answer them easily. It leaves it leaves us uh, forced to discuss them, and that's that's really uh, I can't think of almost a better use of the medium, whether narrative or documentary, uh, than that. So that's terrific. It's also um, it's also a film about a, a very good friend of mine, uh, among other people, uh, Emmanuel Demerode, who I think is uh, I've known for many years and spent a lot of time with um, in in the park and in other places. And uh, as you'll see, I think that he he has almost uncontested claim to the mantle of uh, conservationist with the most dangerous job in all of global conservation. Um, and he's someone I admire enormously. Uh, he's a hero, uh, a true hero to many of us who, who care about um, the fight for biodiversity and environment. Um, so for all those reasons, uh, I'm, ex I'm very excited for you guys to see this film. I think that um, the only thing I would say about it is you can easily watch this film and, and uh, mm, view it uh, as a number of things. It's, it's certainly a film about um, some very heroic people, uh, not just Emmanuel, but um, it, it's, it's a film uh, that, that really gives the lie to the sort of uh, reductive presumption that there are no honest African civil servants it's, it's a film about African civil servants heroically defending uh, the principles that they're in their public offices to defend. Um, it's a film about a young journalist doing very, very uh, dangerous cutting edge work to ex expose a story. Um, and it's, and it, it's, it's certainly a film about people trying to uh, protect, among other things, a very iconic uh, and rare species of animal that we happen to have a very close relationship to. But I think that I think that to look at it as a film about people trying to save gorillas is really the wrong lens uh, through which to look at it. I think that that would be a very uh, 20th century lens, contextual lens to look at this film. I think it's much more appropriate to look at this film as really a conversation about um, a big argument that's taking place right now, maybe the most important argument on the planet, which is how are we going to value natural resources? Um, and I think that what the film, the right way to look at the film is that it's a film that, um, that shows really at the front lines uh, of the, the global argument over whether natural resources, the ecosystem that supports our civilization, the biodiversity that's a part of that uh, framework, that biological framework that we're intricately and intimately knitted up in, um, is going to be valued within our economic framework. And it, the right way to look at the film is not so much about, you know, are mountain gorillas more important than oil on a moral level? Because unfortunately, uh, you'd have to say after 100 plus years of an environmental conservation movement that was rooted in the idea that nature and animals had a certain intrinsic or moral or spiritual value, um, that argument, that that, that uh, line of attack or line of argument has not succeeded in substantially protecting biodiversity, iconic species, uh, or the underlying ecosystems that support all of us. Every major indicator of environmental health, from carbon density in the atmosphere, to the rate of biodiversity loss, to the collapse of fisheries, to deforestation is accelerating. And that, uh, therefore, sort of, uh, I think we're increasingly realizing, um, makes the conversation about whether there's an intrinsic value to these things or, or moot, because that, con that, that conversation has been um, clearly determined. 
um, and, our, and our economic, the engine of our economic extractive uh, system is, is clearly uh, uh, outweighing uh, the moral argument. So as such, we have, to, we have to make a different argument. And I think that what this film is really about is um, it's not so much just about people trying to protect gorillas as it is about people insisting that the old legacy of allowing um, extractive economies to create private profit and leave the external costs of natural resource capital degradation uh, off their books and worse, to socialize it to the rest of us and especially disproportionately to the poor people of the planet who tend to rely for their uh, economic livelihoods on ecosystems more directly uh, than the richest people on the planet. It is, uh, the people in this film are arguing that that has to stop, that natural resource capital has to be appropriately valued, that the fact that uh, nature is the GDP of the poor, as my friend Pavan Sukhdev says, um, and that uh, large multinational corporations have to be confronted with the ways in which they are uh, only adding up in the balance sheet what they are able to successfully extract in a non-sustainable way from places like Barunga and leaving off their balance sheet the massive numbers piling up in the loss column, not in a moral sense, not in a spiritual sense, but in an actual economic sense. The, the, um, the insistence that natural resource capital gets appropriately valued in our economic equation is, I think, the argument of the 21st century. And it's going to be the best hope of moving our civilization into a sustainable uh, modality, if you want to call it that. Um, the, uh, there's no question that the, one of the reasons this film is relevant is that it shows the way that these, these economic costs, the threats to the long-term health of poor rural communities are really where some of the most um, important uh, fights in this argument are taking place. But to bring it closer to home, just consider the fact that you know, New York City um, delivers nearly a billion gallons of water a year to nine million people in the New York metropolitan area through a watershed um, that through wonderful foresight, New York City long ago decided should be protected through the relatively low cost mechanism of buying up and protecting critical watershed and forests in the, um, in the mountains just north of here. By a lot of very credible estimates, New York City saved itself on the order of seven to nine billion dollars uh, that it would have had to invest to build the water sanitation infrastructure that would be needed to deliver uh, an equivalent um, uh, you know, healthful watershed to the city. So it's not, these are not just, th th these aren't just economic questions that are um, taking place out in places like Virunga. They're, they're, they're economic realities that we can see um, many, many clear examples of. I think if you read um, the fantastic report generated by, out of the UN by Pavan Sukhdev called the, the TEAB report, the Economics of Ecosystems and Biodiversity. It's full of case study after case study, a very, very compelling argument that when we do the economic math correctly, it's a, it's a closed case as to whether or not um, it's in our best economic interest to protect natural resource capital. And I think that, um, I'll close just by saying I think that that's, that's really what this film is about. It's not, um, it's not 
your classic uh, National Geographic film uh, or your Mutual of Omaha Wild Kingdom that we all grew up on about terrific animals in uh, far off places that a couple of people are you know, studying over many decades. This is, this is, really, about, um, this is really about the nitty gritty uh, realities of the fight to determine uh, are we going to collectively insist that, that these places be understood for what they are, which is the underpinning of our entire uh, economic framework civilization and, and, that, and that the rapacious, um, uh, the rapacious push to unsustainably extract as much value for as few people as possible has got to stop. So in that sense, I think it's a, it's a very, very pioneering, uh, cutting edge, and important film. And um, in Nick Sekron, you really couldn't have a better person to discuss it with after the film. I've had the pleasure of working with Nick for a couple of years. Um, he represents everything that's best about the UN's uh, sophistication and capacity in terms of bringing some of these ideas into actual application on the ground. And, um, uh, un unfortunately, I have to go to something else and I won't be able to join him, but uh, you, you really are in for a treat in terms of being able to talk to Nick afterwards. So thank you all for being here and um, enjoy the film. <laughs>